Hi everyone, it's Michelle Lloyd here, founder of United Art Space, and I'm back for an art relief session. We've been doing them every Monday, although I did take last Monday off. And I am joined this week with one of my lovely, lovely members who I've known for a long time now, Lloyd Lewis. Hi Lloyd. Hello everybody, how are we doing? Thank you. Well. Thank you for joining us. So Lloyd has a great, great story. Um, he is a portrait artist as well as a world champion kickboxer, multi-time. <laughs> champion yeah, yeah we've got to get that both, both of those in but because it was hard work <laughs> um and so he's kindly joined today because I, I asked in my membership if anybody would like to come in as a guest and lloyd very kindly volunteered and said that we could just hang out together we're going to chat art chat life and lloyd is going to take us through a self-portrait so you're going to be doing a self-portrait aren't you i'm going to try yeah I'm, I'm starting to um have a little go with charcoal um yeah the medium that I've always avoided and I, I've tried kind of periodically in the, and, and it's never been able to kind of get it so I've just thought right I'm just going to go for it I'm just going to keep pushing and trying and working and, and it's slowly slowly getting better um, yeah. but I just thought I'll have a go with some charcoal and we'll do a self-portrait today. Wonderful so we'll see the steps that Lloyd's taking and so grab yourselves a sketchbook grab some pencils um just if you want to just doodle as we're chatting and then take what Lloyd teaches you afterwards or if you want to have a go at doing your own self-portrait go and grab a mirror now or a photograph would you mirror, say yeah, mirror, phone photograph I, I I do a lot off my phone um so I'll, I'll have and, and it's nice because you can kind of have that big broad look and then like look at the fine details you can't really do that with the mirror but yeah. I'm going to be using a mirror right in front of me now so yeah. Wonderful. But so Lloyd's out there with his mirror. I'm going to be checking the comments. So please, we've got Lloyd with us. Ask any questions as we're going along. Um, we're, just, we're also just going to say, I hope everyone is okay. We, Lloyd and I were just chatting before we came on and just saying, you know, how tough it is at the moment. And Lloyd, especially, you know, you've got stuff going on. So I just want to say a big thank you for joining me because I know how busy you are and you've got stuff going on at home. And so thank you. And it is frustrating at the minute. I know there's people who want to make art and they're not getting a chance to. So this is why coming together like this is really, really lovely. So so thank yeah. you. Everyone is saying hello. Let us know where you're tuning in from, from around the world. Patricia, hello. Linda, hello from Australia. Hello. Sophia's tuning in. Hello, Sophia. Amanda, hello, Leah. Stacy's on. Stacy shared this to yeah, her Facebook group as well. Thank you. Uh, Les is on. Hello, Les. Hi, Les. Um, Lovely. Okay, so we'll get stuck in then. And if you've got any questions, guys, just let me know as we go along. But should we right. talk a little bit first about how you got into art? Because I always find... Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, I've always loved art. I went to art college um, after school and, I, well, I excelled in school at, at art. I, was, I, I loved to draw. Um, and it was just from you know, I, I've always had a sketchbook I've always drawn even ever since I was a little boy like you know I remember having a sketchbook at the age of four or five and I would just draw in it continuously and then you know um so I went and left school and went and did art college and just didn't kind of gel and get on with it um I think a lot of people have a very similar story it just wasn't for me it wasn't that environment I'm no, nothing against art college or anything like that um, but yeah, it just wasn't for me in that particular time in my life. I then found it's a typical story of mine. I think everyone can relate to this. It's really, you know, you've, you've all got something similar, I'm sure. Um, so then I found um, competitive kickboxing, full contact competitive kickboxing. Um, I started fighting within my within five fights. I won a Welsh title. And then um, I always used to before my first fight, I said I'd be a world champion by the time I'm 27. Um, but I get sevens and fours mixed up. And I literally, this was before my first fight. And when I started, I was a skinny, asthmatic, um, like really, really, you know, I, I, I was, I'd been in hospital as a child, like regularly, you know, because my asthma was really bad. It's still really bad now. You know, I'm on the shielding list. I can't go out because like, if I caught it, I'd be in, quite, in, in a lot of trouble. So I have to take all sorts of medications to control my asthma. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I kind of found kickboxing and I just, I loved it. I, I, it's like art. I loved it, you know, completely got it. And I just devoted myself to it. And then I, um, I had my first fight before, like I said, before my first fight, I told a really good friend that I'd be a world champion. 
um, uh, before, before I was 27. I get sevens and fours mixed up in my head. So I was a world champion by the time I was 24. I was a two-time world kickboxing champion by the time I was 27. Um, right. I won a Welsh, British, European, intercontinental and, world, and two world titles. I won the European Games twice. I won the um, WMA um, World Games twice. I, I'm a black belt fourth dan. I now run a martial arts school as well as being an artist. Um, although the art is a bit of a struggle at the moment. Well, I've got commissions and things on the go, but I'm, it's hard to get 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 going on them because of the time and things. Yeah. But I, I run a martial arts school online now. We've we we were like four members off getting uh, getting um, two hundred members before this all started, and it was really cool. And now we're down to about one hundred and fifty six. So we've lost some. Yeah. Um, but you know, we, we've, we've kind of leveled off and I, I think we haven't lost any for a little while. People yeah. are loving the classes. It's just really like on my, on my body, it's really bad. Um, but three, four years ago, I had th- a two, three spinal, three serious spinal surgeries. Um, so, you know, I, I, in my neck, so I, I, I went to bed one night and I said to my wife, Oh, my back's a bit sore and she's like oh no and it had been kind of gradually getting worse and worse and worse over well my, my neurosurgeon said over about 10 years you'll have been getting weaker and weaker and weaker I told everybody in the gym that they were like what <laughs> but um because I was like, like the fittest in the gym and things but um yeah I just went to bed that night and I woke up the next day and I was I couldn't move I literally couldn't move so emergency oh. MRIs, um, consultations. I had to have a consulta- private consultation because they thought giving me physio was the best idea. That would have probably made me paralysed. Well, no, it would have made me paralysed because I had a, a private thing and a private consultation. My neurosurgeon said, right, emergency surgery, boom, you're in. And I had to have emergency surgery um, to get my, my neck all sorted. It took three spine surgeries to get it sorted. Oh my gosh. And when, how long ago was this, Lloyd? How long ago um, was the operation? April the 20th, probably two, three years ago. So not three that long ago. ago. Yeah. No, 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 not that long ago. Um, two years ago in March was my last one. March 27th yeah. was mm. my last one. And then in the September of that year, I opened a martial arts school. Uh, <laughs> I quit. I was a teacher. I was a secondary school teacher. So I quit my secondary school teaching job. Um, I, I knew there were things I needed to do in my life. Um, and I love teaching. I genuinely love teaching. I love kids. Um, I loved. Uh, I love art completely, un- unconditionally. And I love martial arts. Mm. So what I did, I, I made the logical leap of giving up my cushy um, job with a regular paycheck to then do things that um, run a business which I've never run before ever and I, I had no clue like I've learned so much uh, you know over these last two years and I'm still like I don't know all of it I know a tiny yeah. tiny tiny bit about a tiny you, bit you're doing well considering you don't know that much aren't you well, so yeah my wife is amazing she's been a great asset to the you've business you've got a good woman beside you yeah oh, she's incredible she's absolutely incredible yeah I, I do love this though because it defies odds doesn't it you know when you've got so much going on and most people would say to you don't be don't be silly you know you've got a good job no, there don't go and open an art studio <laughs> Yeah, but you yeah. did it and it just shows yeah. you that when you have a dream you know it doesn't matter even what's going on with you physically you can you can make it happen and you it's did you can you, you tell yourself like um that we all tell ourselves stories every single day and like some of these there's a lot of negative chatter going on in our heads every single day and I, i've got this little saying i just change the story you mm-hmm. know just change the story and, and tell you, you we right. tell ourselves oh no that's going to be hard isn't it i can't do that yeah. Shut up. Change the story. Just get on with it. Try it. Like, yeah. um, I, I, I was doing a, I do a mastermind with a lot of very, 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 very experienced martial arts business owners. And they were telling me they, they had all this going on and they had all these different kind of levels of things. And, and I was just starting off. I literally had no members. I was, I started that mastermind in July. I, um, I was opening my school in September. So I literally had no members like, at all. And I was, li- I was, I'd spend, four or five hours just writing things down and strategizing and 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 it worked because like it took, it took me 40 days to get 100 members you yeah. know and then it was kind of consolidation and and kind of yeah. keeping members happy and stuff like that but yeah it just took it just takes um if you want to do something like with my art I, I genuinely love it and I, I um 
I'm not saying I'm the best artist in the world. I'm just trying to be the best artist I can be. You know, that's it. That's all I'm trying to do. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm just, I, I genuinely love it. I want to, I've got massive targets, massive ambitions that I will try my absolute hardest to meet if i don't meet them not a problem but it will make something of me on that kind of journey to trying to make it so yeah like for me it's just it's about you know you, you we tell ourselves lots and lots of things um nice like to say this to all the, all the kids and things you you can you can do anything you literally can do anything you've got a massive potential you're sat here you're 11 you're 12 you're 13 however old they were and you the world is your oyster literally the world is your oyster you can do anything it's just what you tell yourself you know, if you tell and, yourself no, then you never yeah, will. That's right. And if you say you can't, you can't. If you say you can, yeah. you can. I love that phrase. Yeah. So how long have you been a portrait artist for? And people are saying they're sat here with their children. Um, Georgina says, I'm sat with my son, James. He's nine and he's going to be doing a self-portrait alongside me. So hi, awesome. James. <laughs> awesome. Can you all guys please post in the um, in the comments the photos of what you do and I'll, I'll post it yeah. finished. I'll post yeah. as well. So I'd love to see them. They'll be amazing. Definitely do that because um, actually when I finish with this, I'll do I'll do a portrait with my children as well and I'll post them. So after the video's finished, you'll be able to then go back to this video and put your put your pictures in. I don't think it lets you attach the picture whilst we're watching. So just do that when we're hung up, uh, when we've hung up. Um, Paul is saying there's subtitles covering half the picture. If you've got subtitles, it's in your settings. So on the video, you'll see a little cog at the bottom right hand corner. You need to turn subtitles off. That's something to do with your settings. Um, uh, Leah says, wow, what a story. Uh, Les says, how do you manage all of those activities? We'll probably come back to that question. So we get started with the with the portrait and then we'll yeah. keep asking questions as you're going. Is that okay? Absolutely, absolutely. So um, this is how I draw and this is what I do to, to start off. I'm not trying to teach my grandmother to suck eggs here or anything like that, all right? Um, I love that saying, by the way. Don't you do what a weird <laughs> saying? Don't teach your grandmother to suck eggs. Where does that start from? Where does that come from? It's nuts, isn't it? Have we missed a time in our lives where we try, where we're old people sucked eggs and then <laughs> that doesn't happen anymore? You know? I need to go and Google where that same came from. need to Google that because is there, is there, have there been people kind of like lining up our eggs in front of old people going, do you know what time it is? <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> Anyway, Actually, whilst you're talking, I'm going to Google where that phrase came from. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, when I start off, it's all about, um, for me, it's not about drawing a face. Uh, I don't, it's, the same, it's the same process for me if I'm drawing an apple or a landscape or anything like that. You start off with your big, basic, broad shapes, all right? I, I liken it to kind of, if you're building a house, you start with the foundations. You don't start with the, um, the doorbell. You know, so um, start off, I'm going to start off with the top of the head and the bottom and I'm going to put a, put a couple of lines in and I'll show, occasionally I'll show you what I'm doing. Um, if Michelle can tell me, um, give me a kind of prompt yeah. and I'll show you. Right, so I'm going to start off looking at my mirror, arm's length, and I'm going to draw a little line at the top. And I'm just going to kind of estimate. This is all for me, this is all estimation. And um, I've got my putty rubber here, my trusty putty rubber, which I'll put into a point in a little bit um, to kind of get to pull things out. I'm using a nice grey paper as well. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, there we are. That's it, grey yeah. paper as well. So um, that's kind of my half tone. But if I'm if I'm starting to kind what, of what paper are you using, sorry, Lord? Um, it is. Sorry, one second. It's this. It's a pastel um, pastel paper. Oh yeah. Murano, it's called by Dale Rowney. Um, I bought it a while ago. I've not used it too much, but thought I'd use it for today. So, top and bottom, and then I'm going to draw that kind of line straight down in the center. So you start, you look straight down in the center. You're drawing that line, which kind of goes right down the root of your nose, through your mouth, and everything like that. All right. So I'm I'm just going to do a straight on um, portrait now. So I'm going to I'm looking. Chin. So I'm going to look at now. I'm going to look at the where my hair starts, where it all ends, starts. I'm going to draw my forehead. I'm looking at my mouth, and so with me, my head's been, as you know, my story. My head's been punched a lot. Some of my <laughs> proportions aren't quite the same as yours, probably. I literally, when I was fighting, 
um, <laughs> when I was competing, my nose would go one way, then the other, then in the middle. So I kind of <laughs> finished slightly all right in the middle. But literally, I've had my nose over this way, over that way, and then, you know. Oh, so, um, Stacey, Stacey's asking a question. She's asking, are you starting with pencil or charcoal? Charcoal. I'm starting charcoal. with charcoal. Yeah, so I'm just going to go for it with charcoal. Um, now, what I'm what I'm going to start with as well, so I'm looking at abstract shapes. I'm going to start inside and then kind of create outlines a little bit later because those inside shapes are sh things that I can kind of look at and anchor. Um, and the out outside is kind of almost... Not arbitrary, but it's, it, it does have a definite kind of um, place. But I need to have things inside so I can kind of sh anchor where those outside shapes are, if that makes sense. So like my eyes are a certain distance away from the outside. So I'm going to so I'm going to draw now. Asking, draw could you turn the um, the camera around so they can see your drawing? Yeah, a little bit more. Perfect. Yeah. How's okay. that? Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Right, so, right. So straight line down the center. My eyes are about halfway from the top of my hair to my chin. So I've drawn that line there, right? So that I know my eyes go um, in that position there. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna look at the root of my nose, and from the root of my nose, I'm going to come up with two diagonals coming up towards my eyebrows. All right, then I'm going to look at where my eyebrows go. It's always constantly measuring, always looking at things in relation to other things as well. All right, so um, eyebrows there. Is it possible to show people? People are asking if they can see as you're going along. Can you see that? It's nothing really at the moment. Okay. Yeah. So you're just mapping out. Yeah. Just very, very broad shapes at the moment. All right. Because I don't want to get into the details. Because this is this is where you get where you can um, really fall get caught in a trap. All right. Because if you start looking at oh I've got the eye boom 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 and then everything else you look at it, 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 this beautiful eye that you've drawn in relation to everything else and it's wrong then it's wrong. You know. So you want to try and map out first. Draw everything first. So. I'm going to draw the other eyebrow. So you're looking for like the big shapes and big the angles, angles of the eyebrow. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm not, I'm, and I'm just drawing straight lines. So I'm going to look, I'm looking now at the sort of um, right hand side of my nose and I'm just going to kind of come and draw a shape there. So if people are coming on late, so you've, you've kind of mapped out the top of your head, the bottom of your head, the face. Yeah. And then you start to look for where the eyes are sitting and then now angles, um, eyebrows so and nose. What I'm doing now, from my eyes, halfway down to my chin, that's the end of my nose, all right? Okay, and now I'm looking at the end of my nose. So that's just a, about a, probably about a third down, okay? So here we go. That's a third down, so hopefully, there we go. I can't work that out, can I? Okay, so yeah. Can do that. Yeah. All right. So now I'm going to put my glasses on. Right, oh, that's better. I can see. <laughs> right. So now I'm, going to, I'm not going to draw my glasses. No, I'm going to have to draw my glasses now, aren't I? Awesome. So I am looking at. I'm going to. I'm not. Going to, I'm going to go crazy and not draw my glasses. This could look like anything now. So what I'm going to look at now, from the end of my nose, the just about, if I go straight up from the outside nostril, my left nostril straight up, I should hit the start or around the start of my eye. Okay, so I'm going to go straight up from my nostril on either side. All right. Um, here we go. Like that. So I'm going to just be quiet for a second because I want to look at Just looking at the where my mouth is, the lower lip. Obviously, my lower lip is a little bit bigger than my my upper lip. Okay, I'm not drawing too many things. I just draw literally just drawing some shapes. So hopefully, you can start to see. Can you see that? Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Right. 
No. So looking at eyebrows, they're going to draw the top of my forehead with my crazy lockdown locks. Is anybody else having problems um, with the lockdown hair? <laughs> I love it. It's awesome. Oh. Yeah, my friends, um, I, I was FaceTiming my friend and her husband came on and he's, he's just got one big, huge mop. <laughs> I was yeah. like, well, I'm quite envious of your, your big head of hair, actually. <laughs> my little boy, he's, he's almost going to topple over his head. His hair is just massive. It's, 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 it's awesome. I, he's got proper, like, blonde, curly, beautiful hair. Has he got the kind of hair? Yeah, because my son, if you grow it, it just all, like, sticks out the sides. It doesn't, you know, look good. Long. Oh so no, we've, he's got, he's got beautiful off. curly hair. Has he? Yeah, we were, we once, um, like I'm a, I'm a massive Doctor Who nerd, and we went to, there was a local Comic Con, and Colin Baker was there, and he's a Doctor, a sixth Doctor, and he had quite curly hair when he was a younger man, and um, like, when when he saw Fergus, he was like, you've got my hair, give me my hair back, and Fergus was like, <laughs> what's going on here? So right, now, um, talk, I'm looking at the root of the nose, okay? And just below that, my eyes start, okay? So the root of the nose, just here, okay? So just slightly below. If you kind of, if you're looking, you look slightly below, that's where your eyes are gonna start, here. And so I'm just gonna draw a little line there, and I'm just gonna come up like that, okay? So, can you see, oh, there we go. Yeah. Can you see that? Cool, 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 yeah. right. And I'm gonna go, now it should be, all right, straight across on the other side, we've got the same kind of thing. So on the other side, you've got your eyes um, starting there, right? When you're drawing um, features, don't draw eyes. Like your eyes aren't, um, you, you, if you just draw an eye and, and you kind of, you, we, we, we look at features all the time, you know, we look at eyes, nose and mouth, and we in our, in our head, we conceptualize this but you need to draw it in relation to the shapes that you see, not kind of what you have in your head that constitutes an eye, right? Mm -hmm. So if you draw um, like an eye that you see, then you kind of lose that, you get a kind of flatness and you don't, you don't draw a realistic eye. So you wanna kind of look at what that, eye, what that eye is doing. You wanna look at it in relation to everything else and look at it as a shape, okay? Um, everything right now is shapes, so I'm going to just come in and I'm going to draw in that um, bridge of that nose. So I'm going to go a little closer. Let me just turn this round. At this stage, are you looking for tones as well, or are you literally no, just looking no at... No tones, no tones at all. I'm going to put my glasses on, I think, actually, because I can't properly see. I haven't thought this through. <laughs> there we go. That's better. I'm going to draw my glasses into it as well. Oh, I'm just going to complicate the matters. So, um, if you draw, if you've got glasses, look where they are. Les says, Ooh. "Could you keep in that position because he's drawing you?" <laughs> Who's, who said that? Les is drawing you. Awesome, Les. Right, I, I can't wait to see this. It's going to be awesome. Um, right. You're going to put the glasses in now, Les. Sorry about that. Sorry, Les. Sorry. <laughs> right now, I'm going to look at the inside line on my left hand side. I'm looking at the inside line coming up to my hair. All right. Now I know there's a lot of a lot of artists will kind of look at. Um, I, there's so much um, in terms of theory here. Like there's so many different kind of things that people do. Um, you know they'll start at the top and work down. Um, me, I've got a, a little bit of a scatological approach, and I'll kind of I, my my attention span isn't great all the time. So I'll kind of, as, as you can probably tell from my conversation. Um, I'll go from one kind of thing and I'll go, oh, look, this, and then look at something else. So I'm looking at right now the left hand side of my hair, or just on the inside, not the outside. And then I'm going to come across and draw that line for my hair. And then I'm coming in. I'm just looking at things in relation to um, where they start, where they finish. So I've got a little bit of a, like, it comes down like that at an angle. And I'm looking where that starts. So that starts just above the curve of the eyebrow because your eyebrow goes up and then down, or mine does. Um, so I'm just going to see that starts there. Then I'm going down. 
here. So I've mapped out now the outside of my forehead. That's good. Right, so glasses. So I'm looking at my glasses where they sit on my nose, just below the root of my nose, just below that little bit there. So I'm just going to draw a little line over there. Should have thought this through at the start. Okay, so I've drawn my nose, I've drawn my glasses where they sit on my nose. Okay, now I'm looking at my nostrils and I'm just going to kind of get blocking those shapes loosely. And it's important to see where those glasses finish and where, what, what kind of the distance that you've got between your kind of, the, you know, the, the rest of your nose. So where your, where your nostrils start and things. So that's kind of what I'm looking at right now. All right. And measuring all the time. <laughs> measuring, looking. Yeah, this is, I'm sorry, it's not the most exciting of, of um, <laughs> TV in the world. <laughs> in the world. It's so important, isn't it, with a portrait? If you, want, if you want, yeah, if you want to get a likeness, but of course you can always use your face as a, as a starting point to just go off and <laughs> oh, yeah. create yeah. something crazy. You can no. do. I mean, it's this. You know, there's no right or wrong. But I, I for me, I, I, I quite like the traditional, um, like realism and things like that. I, I love, yeah. like um, you know. Like Lucy, Lucy and Freud and William Bouguereau and you know yeah for me it's about a like like a genuine likeness um and it's so. great it's great for the brain as well isn't it because it really does it does make you force yourself to see what you can really see and yes. you know that it, it is good for the brain it's it's a good exercise for the brain it absolutely is it's really really important to um to just be critical, like really, mm -hmm. really be hard on, on, on yourself and be disciplined. Like discipline is, is so important when you're doing this. Um, yeah. Because if you're, if you're not focused on exactly what you're drawing, then um, then it becomes, well, it's, it's, it's you know, if, you, like if your intention is to draw something, just to draw it and have a bit of fun, I mean, it should always be just to have a bit of fun. You, you like yeah. when I start, I always think to myself, I'm not going to create a masterpiece here. I'm just going to have a bit of fun, you know, because yeah. I love, genuinely love drawing. Um, but, you know, you want, like for me, my intention is I want to create a likeness here. All right. So I don't want to, I want it to be something that looks vaguely like me, you know, if you squint and, and, and running past the window and it's there or something like that. But um, if that makes sense. Uh, so, yeah, um, for me, it's about mm. like. And, it, and it's if it's not if it's not quite a likeness at the end of this, that's fine. You know, this isn't my normal way of working. Having having, um, I don't know how many people are there next. Yeah. To me. <laughs> Actually, can we so see I, your drawing so far? Yeah. So <laughs> there we go. So I'm blocking things in, starting yeah. to look at placing features, but not like in detail or anything like that. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's about. Um, seeing where things go so i've got a, like for me I've, I've got this little kind of line that goes up my nose like it goes at the odd angle up here so i'm drawing that in now and i'm looking at where that uh, filtrum the, the little bit there um goes in relation to that because it's where that where that no line of my nose ends that filtrum starts comes across and now it's gonna be quiet for a second i want to Locking that upper lip. And I'm going to look. I'm looking at where the end of my mouth on my right side. There we go. OK, so just end of my mouth comes in line with my um, pupil. All right, so I'm just gonna make, block that in there as well. So if you start to look at it as a, as a kind of map, your face is a map and you kind of look at the different locations uh, and the features and things and block them in, you start to get a likeness slowly. 
and it's not. So, and again, I'm going to draw my upper lip. And I've got this little bit of my, the end of my mouth is just this thin line. And then the upper lip starts to come into play. So you've got this little line, straight line here, and then the upper lip comes into play. And people say, like the, I think, because um, you know, people say the, the likeness is in the eyes. I think also your likeness is in your mouth. When you talk to someone, you look at their mouth a lot, you know. So um, your likeness isn't just in your eyes, it's in your mouth as well. If that makes sense. That sounds crazy, doesn't it? No, it's, it's, yeah, it's true though. It is. Right. So I'm just looking at where the end of my glasses come into relation, in relation to my eyes. So the top of my glasses cut across my eyes, which are really handy. There. Okay, so on my left side, the arch of my eyebrow, my eye will finishes just past the arch of my eyebrow there. So that, that kind of end bit here. Sorry for any of these technical terms and baffling you guys. <laughs> the end bit. <laughs> Catherine's just tuned in. Hi, Catherine. Um, Hello, Catherine. So uh, Lloyd is, is looking in the mirror and doing a self-portrait and he's just talking through the steps that he takes when he is working on a portrait. And you do a, a self-portrait every year, don't you, Lloyd? I do a self-portrait every year and I've got a little um, weird little tradition as well. When I start a um, new sketchbook, I start it off on the first page with a self-portrait as well. Like, and I Because, you, you know, I, I've drawn a lot of self-portraits during lockdown as well because you know, I'm always here, <laughs> and yeah. um, that's kind of an easy reference to do. And I've, I've done a, a few um, still lives and things like that. But I'm just working on, um, like, trying to get competent with charcoal at the moment. So I've done a few, quite a few um, self portraits on in charcoal. I've done one recently, which I'm semi happy with. So it's on my facebook page and my uh, instagram if anybody was interested um no, yeah, I'll, yeah i'll put the link <laughs> yeah yeah jules says this is the first time ever that she's attempted a portrait of herself and it's a fascinating process amazing awesome that was great <laughs> yeah, to take time to look at your own face as well you know <laughs> it is and you you'll notice things as well when you get when you really get into it you kind of notice things about about how you look and you kind of see maybe how, you know, not how you see yourself in terms of kind of how you rationalise yourself, but you see yourself in terms of how other people may see you. Mm. And it's, it's interesting, I think. So I'm, I'm, I'm preparing to kind of block in um, shadow shapes as well now. So these, these kind of lovely little shapes that we've got that, I haven't, I'm in a, in a darkened room, which isn't the best. I should have a light coming from like up above on one side, which would be ideal. I haven't really got that. I'm in shade, but I'm just going to kind of play with looking at kind of. Can we, out can we see shade. before you go into doing the shading? Just because there's people just. Like yeah, I'm not going to do any, any shading. I'm probably not going to do any shading yet. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. It's good with the glasses. Yeah, I don't. I don't tend to draw um, self myself. I only self portraits with my glasses on, um, just because they're a pain, and there's something extra to draw. And why make it harder? <laughs> when it's not hard enough. So it's all about looking. So I'm looking where my eyebrow um, ends now on the right side to in rela in relation to my glasses. You've got with the with the glasses as well. You've got the added issue of symmetry because they're both they're the same size, you know. So they're a kind of they're not um, they're man made. They're they're mechanically made, so they they have to be precise. And there's something I I don't know if I'm very good at um, precision um, and creating things like that. So yeah. 
So that's another reason I think why I don't draw glasses. And because my nose has been hit about a bit. They don't sit straight on my head. They always sit at an angle for some odd reason. Well, because one side of my nose has been <laughs> harder than the other. So yeah, just blocking in. Um, this is just me blocking in now and looking at drawing shadow shapes. I'm going to start to look at um, putting in some of the outer, outer edges and things like that. So I'm looking at where my ear, um, the top of my ear, where that starts. So that starts in relation to my eyebrow. So I'm just going to draw the top of my eyebrow on my left hand side. So I'm just going to draw a line straight over there. And I'm going to block it in, but I need to be aware of how big my hair is. All right. And just in terms of like the distance that's covered and, and be just very careful um, blocking that in. So I've kind of loosely blocked in the top of my ear and I'm looking at where that finishes. In relation so that's just at my left nostril here so i'm going to draw and block that in over there lovely don't know if this is going to look too much like me in the end but hey -ho, we'll try our best right now so i've got my features i've got some of my features in most of my features in so i'm looking at now my mouth and where that is like because my, my jaw arches down so i'm looking at kind of where that starts in relation to my mouth. How's everybody else getting on out there with this? Am I helping or am I confusing everybody? And yeah, let us know. If you've got any questions as we go along, please let us know. I'm still looking at where the, the phrase comes from for the grandma sucking eggs. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> Right, so I'm just going to block in again. It's just my um, my lack of attention um, attention span. I'm blocking in the left, the right hand side of my mouth now, as to where that goes. I think I kind of loosely done it, but I just want to double check. So I think I've overestimated. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, right. So now, I, uh, as I'm getting on a little bit in, in years, I'm kind of starting to develop lines and things. So, um, you know, there's like lines around here. Um, so I'm going to start to block those in. And again, it's just looking at them in relation to um, where things are. So don't don't just assume always check and then double check so keep measuring yeah and it's checking those angles and yeah and like the tip of the nose or the end of the eyes and and drawing a line down from the, the eyes to see where the intersections are that's it always always looking always double checking triple checking so now i'm going to look at my right ear i'm going to have a look where that's Starts. So that starts right at the top of my eye. There, so I'm going to pop that in. And again, like looking at it in terms of relation in relation to how big my hair is, how thick it is, you know, like what size it is at the moment. Um, so I block that ear in. Jules says it's going quite well so far. <laughs> awesome, Jules. I'm happy. That's great. Right. So, again, just looking at on the right hand side where my jaw starts to kind of fold in.
Okay. Are we getting on with that Googling, Michelle? Oh, there's, out? there's some, I found that years ago they used to take an egg and, and put a hole in the top and the bottom and... Um, oh, to get the shell? Yeah, I think so. I mean, yeah. I think it's something to do with that. It's like years and years ago there was a process for sucking the inside of an egg out. <laughs> And and I think it came from that, but there's so many. I'm still looking. It's hilarious. I know it's a great saying, though. It's one of those insane sayings. So I should have said at the start as well. When you're looking, I, I'm doing a dead-on um, um, view. But um, you kind of need to find, if you're looking kind of to one side, you need to find space, a, a place to kind of definitely look. So you make sure that it's always in the same kind of position. Your head is always in the same position. You don't want to be um, drawing mm. from a different angle, if that makes sense. Yeah. I can make myself look a bit younger here. Yeah, I normally make myself look older. So. <laughs> My, uh, Les says mine is looking good as well just cannot see the top of his head oh okay because he's doing you oh yeah <laughs> how's that <laughs> take a screenshot <laughs> <laughs> Right, so I'm looking again now at, at the hair, the top of the hair, the outside of the hair, to try and kind of get it where it needs to be. Um, the pop, popping those straight lines in, it's nothing, no detail. It's it's just straight lines, and I've gone straight to the neck. Um, so straight lines um, to kind of block in what I see. Let me just show you where I am at the moment. All right, is that okay? Yeah, cool. looking good. Yeah, starting to get there slowly. It's it's a process, and you know, if I'm if I'm um, working, if I was working on this for a prolonged period of time, I'd kind of uh, and when I'm putting shade in and things like that, I'd use um, to tr to create like a f form. So if we're moving on a little bit, like um, you'd want to make certain areas lighter, like areas that are in front lighter and areas that are back darker. And also you'd kind of, with some of those edges that go back further, um, you'd kind of blur them a little bit. So they're not, there's not kind of definite edges. So as you come in closer, those edges are slightly more sharper and definite. As you go back, you kind of blur those edges um, and yeah, and and kind of make that, um, you know, kind of a little bit kind of fuzzier. So you, you, it's like a a visual trick. So I'd, I'd use like a, my little white Conti crayon to put some white highlights in on my nose and things, and those areas that are front and center. Yeah, Stacy says she's doing an awesome selfie, and. Awesome. Mandy says, really enjoying this. I usually use a mirror, but today I'm drawing from a photo. It's fine. Awesome. Yeah, there's no, like, I think, um, you know, there's a lot of artists who will be like, oh, no, you can't use your phone and things. I, I usually, you, I, I've usually just used my phone. Um, you know, and every, virtually every single picture that I've done, um, that I've done has been created using my phone as, as the sort of visual um, re resource, you know, so, um, yeah, I think we live in an age where we can, you know, we've got so many things available to us. Yeah, we can do the old traditional way, but I, even even the kind of the masters used to use um, camera obscura and stuff like that to help them plan things out and stuff. So you know, there's no there's no right or wrong. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. All right. So blocking in my eyebrows. tops of my eyebrows now I'm going to put in my pupils properly 
So I'm looking at where they live, where they kind of um, are in relation to, like, so the top of my eye is fairly deep and recessed. So that's a quite a deep line there on my right side. So I'm looking at like where the pupil will be. I'm just going to loosely pop that in. Kind of there. And at the end of the day, this isn't brain surgery or anything like that. You know, if you get it wrong, it's not a problem. It's, not, it's just the, the brilliant thing is you can either erase it and go back over it and try again, or um, you can do another drawing. So, you know, it's not, it's just about learning and, and taking something from it. So for me, this was a great, lovely little exercise in like trying to talk to people and um, while while doing this, <laughs> this is why I'm not I'm doing, doing it. it task. <laughs> I will definitely have a go later there with my kids because I think this is a good one to do with the kids as well. Cool, isn't it? Um, yeah, because yeah, I, as you know, I've just got back to making recently, and it is funny how your brain corrects what you can see. And I've just been getting used to scaling a drawing up and. Uh, on the Fridays with the hub members, I've been doing that in the in the little studio, and it's yeah. it's crazy how um, when you're out of practice, how oh, your yeah. brain just puts things in a place where it just isn't, and then you look back and you think the angle is completely wrong, and okay. so it's definitely practice, 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 and the more you do it, the better you get. So if anyone's um, struggling, just know that. I remember a lad that I went to uni with actually. He he did a self portrait every day for a year awesome and and then it was it was funny then because actually any kind of portrait that he did after that there was always a resemblance of his face in every single portrait because it was obviously so embedded in his subconscious the the, the feet, his own features yeah and so every portrait he did afterwards the door, the door they always kind of look a little bit like him <laughs> but there is there is that some um, i don't know who said that but there is this saying that you know every artist there is a little self bit, bit of this um self-portrait in every portrait that an artist creates you know that's interesting isn't it yeah because it, it is our, it's what we see all the time you know, yeah our face we see more than perhaps any other face you know and we pay more attention when we're you know getting ourselves ready and stuff like that in the morning or whatnot um so yeah it's um it is interesting, but I suppose the the challenge and the and the, the thing is to to kind of really make sure that you don't put you in it. You know, you you want to try and remove you from from the kind of um, yeah yeah that you're doing. Yeah, because that's when you start to think. Because I actually started because whilst we've been doing this, I've just been looking at a picture. Um, because I don't have a mirror here and and I was thinking, gosh, I didn't realise my jaw was that wide and you start to like <laughs> yeah. you know, so look at the angles of things. See yourself how other people see you. Yeah, yeah. So, interesting. Lee's asking a question. He says, Good morning. Do you normally draw flat or on an upright easel? I normally I'm on an easel and I can step in and out. So like I'm kind of a little worried in terms of where my proportions are and stuff because I'm leaning forward and as you're leaning forward it sort of elongates back so I've tried to really um be aware of that I've really made myself like it down here um but yeah I'm normally <laughs> I'm on an easel or if I'm sat if I'm sat on the couch I'll put a um, cushion underneath so it's up right to me at an and, angle um, yeah yeah so it's at an angle but it's still it's, it's fairly close and um, but we I, have a look at the drawing so far. There we go. Yes, it's got so much energy. I love it. Nice. Thank you. All right, just do a little bit more, and then we'll um, we'll call it quits. Yep. So I'm just going to look now. I'm popping in a little bit of my my shoulders and things. And again, it's it's about looking at it in relation to the rest of the face. So I'm looking at where my chin is, and I'm looking at my my neck, and my neck needs to come down a little bit lower than where I put it already. So if I was painting this, or if I was going to draw um, a bit more detail, 
Okay, so if I was going to draw a bit more detail in this, you it, you it, it would change, and you would things would um, be moved, and you would see things that you didn't see before. Because when you start to put in shade and and you start to kind of create form, then because that's what you want to try and do when you shade in, um, you'd see that you know certain areas aren't quite right here and there. Um, and, and it, or it needs to be addressed, you know, and it's a constant process. It's a constant um, kind of reevaluation of where you, what you've done, where things are, you know, and, and you kind of, you have to be critical. You can't ever be um, happy with it until it's finished. And then you can, I, I always find I'm happy with it for like 30 seconds or, or a day or whatever. And then I look back at it, I'm like, well, no, that could be done, that could be done, that could be done. But that's, again, that's part of it. You know, there's paintings I've done in the past that I was really, really happy with. And now I look at it and think, well, I'd never do that now. And, I, and that's part of learning, you know, that's part of ev the evolution of, of ourselves as artists. We don't, we don't stay in the same place. We're always moving forward. We're always trying to be um, better than we were yesterday and if we can be that's and you know if we do it like that I think that, that helps us get better as um, as artists so that's how I try yeah. to do it and I think this exercise is great because um, it is about seeing and really taking the time to see and yes when you are doing a self-portrait like you are now it, you are really really spending that time to look properly and I think that's one of the great things about art it really does make you see and um, I think it's Anton I can't remember what his surname is but he says that when you're about to tackle a drawing spend more time looking than you do drawing always it's always more time yeah definitely I, I can't remember um, but so when I went to art college the one thing I can remember you look more at, um, at, the, at, at, your, at what you're drawing than you do at your drawing you know, yeah. always because this isn't important. What you're drawing, well, that is, and and to convey that, that's where you've got to put your devote your time. You know, this is your, your you know, you're kind of trying to represent there. And the more you look, the 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 better your um detail and your knowledge is, and you know, things like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's no, fine. <laughs> um, Jewel says that. She says in hers, I'm looking really grumpy. I don't feel it though. <laughs> because um, you, 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 like, you will see um, in the majority of portraiture, um, your kind of a setter will rest into their face, you know, and you're kind of you're like, mine, mine is, I'm, I'm not like looking um, particularly happy and things like that. Um, but you, you kind of rest into, and it's that concentration face, isn't it? It's your concentration face, yeah, yeah. So don't, don't, um, like, it's really hard. If you want to draw a, port a portrait of you going like that, <laughs> take a photo and take several photos. Um, don't, don't kind of try and draw a po portrait of you going like that from your mirror because that you'll, you'll, you'll cramp up and things, you know, it's not, it's not good. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting how we have a concentration face, isn't it? How when we are really, when your brain is really focusing on angles and measuring and things like that, but you can't smile whilst you're doing that. Yeah, my wife laughs at me when I'm painting or when I'm um, when I'm drawing and I'm really concentrating. I bite my lower lip, and my toes start to wiggle. Like I start to put them like my toes will go over the top of each other, and just, so yeah, it's really funny. It's weird. I'll, um, the, the kind of crazy things you do. So apparently, so, sucking, sucking eggs, sucking eggs is a way of eating <laughs> raw by making a small hole in each end and sucking the contents into one's mouth. Um, so I don't know whether that was, but Les says he's found something as well. This is so funny how this has become a topic for this week. And um, so if you've just joined, um, Lloyd said um, the phrase "don't." Uh, I'm, I don't yeah. want to. Teach your grandma how to say I'm trying to touch my uh, you know I'm not I'm not saying my 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 yeah. method is the definitive way of portrait painting or drawing or whatever I'm not trying to teach my grandmother to suck eggs 
and, and then, then we started thinking about where the heck did that come from yeah and then so if anyone knows but les has googled it as well and and since sucking eggs is quick and requires no preparation and does not involve carrying the eggs away it's an ideal way for someone to steal a quick meal from a hen house so you literally just put a hole in and suck suck the inside of the egg out oh that sounds gross sounds like rocky <laughs> Catherine just said, I screenshot that expression, Lloyd Lewis. <laughs> awesome. That's wonderful. I want that to be a meme. <laughs> oh, oh, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and then she says, I clench my fist when I paint sometimes. Concentration, I think. And yet I find painting yeah. relaxing. Yeah. There's probably stages where you are. It is taxing on the brain. Oh, I love it. It's my, my favourite thing. When you're, when you're kind of in there, and you're really in depth in, and, and involved and engaged. There's nothing better. It's just it's just one of the best things. And and it is tiring, like in a in a mental kind of way, because you're non-stop thinking, thinking, thinking. But it's one of the most satisfying things you can, a person can do, I think. And when you know, we're all lucky we found art and we know exactly how amazing it is. Yeah, definitely. So I'm just um, fiddling a little bit here and trying to rectify and remedy a few little things. So if I was, again, if I was going to make this a, um, like a really detailed, like portrait and put some um, shading in, I'd make my neck darker. Like, you know, because the neck is further back. So you'd make that darker mm. than than your face. Mm. Your face, apart from maybe the, the, the sort of sides, the, you know, right at the back of your head, um, mm. your, your neck is darker because it's under, it's in shade and, um, and it's receding. So you want to kind of create that idea of depth and that idea of distance. And, and it's yeah. trickery and it's, you know, it's, it's visual trickery, visual magic. Yeah. So, um, Oh, yeah, that's what that's what you kind of try and do. You're you're looking at developing shade and you're um, developing kind of areas of light and dark. Now, um, not that I'm anywhere near ready to do that. I think a great a great tip though is that it's the preparation, isn't it? You know that beginning stage because if you can map out the the main shapes and the angles, because then what happens is as you develop the drawing, you know if those bits aren't right, then everything's wrong. everything will be off for you'll you'll be measuring things against something that is completely incorrect to start with so getting those fundamental parts at the beginning in the right place and and spending a lot of time on that i would say would you no, um, it's, it's it's without a shadow of a doubt the most important thing you can do yeah because i know you work like, but obviously lloyd is an experienced portrait artist and so it might take a little bit longer at that beginning stage for people to just get those foundation bits right and then um, start building it out. So Woody's asked a question, any more advice on measuring first line marks for shape and structure, which is what we've just been talking about. Well, yeah. Portraits are in okay, but I think I rushed the start and now making shadows to try and correct rather than having the basic line work in the first don't, place. Don't start to put shadows and shapes in, in um, now uh, until you've got your lines right. Uh, that's what I would say because um, you're still at an early stage we're 40 something minutes in we're finishing or nearly now um we'll, we'll finish in a minute but um make don't be afraid to go back to the start and and look at things and and so get that line straight down the center of your head all right even if you're kind of even if it's at, a, at an angle you've still got that center line and, and that goes down the center root of your nose and right down through your chin and through the, top, through the top of your head, and then just kind of look at um, like everyone's face is is different, but we, you know we, we all have two eyes and a nose and a mouth. You know most of us, um, and um, they're mostly in the right in, the, in a kind of similar place. So you look at the top of your head, look at the bottom of your uh, your chin, and then measure halfway up, and that's you and look where what what kind of um, it'll usually be your eyes or perhaps your eyebrows or, in, or somewhere in that region, right? Draw a straight line across, 
right? And then from your eyes, draw halfway down. Um, and that should be, for me, it is um, my, the end of my nose, the tip of my nose. And then you've got to look at the sort of the last little bit. And again, for me, it's like a third is uh, where, my, where my mouth is. And then I've got two thirds with my chin. Um, and then from there, I always go straight to the center with that root of the, of the nose. And I'll draw two lines going straight up either side to kind of denote the, um, the, the, shape the, of the eyebrows. eyebrows. And yeah. yeah, and then from there you can look at, so those are my eyebrows, where are my eyes? And you can, your eyes are obviously below your eyebrows. It's just a little line, just a little kind of blocking line to put where those are, where those, line, where those are. And then if you've got the start of your eye, you can end. You can have the start, your the kind of the end of your nose, or, or or vice versa. If you want to kind of go from the root of your nose and do two lovely angles out, you've got. Uh, you can sort of judge the angle of your nose, draw two lines out, and you can see where the end of your nose is. Then you can go up and see where that is in relation to your eye. It's mixing and it's matching all these kind of lovely little details to see mm -hmm. um, where things lie. Don't draw an eye, don't draw a mouth, don't draw a nose and, and just hope, you know, just draw what you see. That's the most important thing. Draw and when, you know, when you say don't draw the eye, what's the best way to map out the eye at the beginning stage then? So are you just so, putting dots and like so uh, the, do. The, the lines where they they start and end? Yeah, so I would do um, starting off, I've got, can you see that? That there? Yeah. yeah. There, okay. Then... I would always uh, the, like a, this. Like for me, I've got like a hooded eyes, and I got um, so the the top of my eye, the um, just above the, um, the 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 lid of my eyes, is quite dark. So I'm going to draw a line there, and that's my that's the kind of. Um, can you see that? Yeah. So then that's the angle. Yeah. yeah. Then I'm looking at. Um, another angle to go to the towards the end of the eye. So if I've got where the end of the eye is, so I'm going to look at, because I've got to take in the count of the lid. So I'm going to go there. And then it, it, you've got a funny little bit. I don't know what it's called. Is it a tear duct or something? Um, there. So you've got this. Oh, there. Back. Can you see that? Yeah. 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 And then you've got a basic shape. Yeah, and then you look at where your pupil is in relation to the start of your, of where that, that deep line is. So I'm just going to say it's there. And then you can draw, so if you've got that pupil in, you can draw where your, the top of your, um, where your eyebrow is. And you can look at the end of your eyebrow as well. So you can start to put in shapes yeah. Straight lines, nothing, nothing to you know. You, you don't want to do anything um, too detailed. You just want to put in little little shapes and little lines, straight lines, um, and um, and just build it up from there. So you know that's just a very quick, yeah, building up of an eye, and and you've got then, but that eye sits in 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 a face, and that eye has. Um, and do you start with the eyes and then so you so you map out the main shapes of the face and then starting with the eyes well i start with the eyes uh, well i don't I, I i my attention is my attend I, I i kind of um i'm all over the place when i when i'm drawing i don't i i wouldn't suggest doing it the way that i do it because i'm literally i'll flip from one area to another to another to another to another and, and just sort of build it up in a kind of haphazard way. Cause like I look at one end and I'll say, okay, yeah. And then I look at another part of my drawing and say, well, that needs a little bit of thick work. So I'll do that. And I kind of slowly build it up um, over, over time, you know, and, and um, but it's important to just get the basics as right as you possibly can at the start. Um, because if you're drawing a painting, then your your painting is only as good as your drawing, and if your drawing is wrong, then your painting is is going to be off. You mm -hmm. know, so um, always be harsh 
at the start and be disciplined don't because we love the detail we love the fun thing you know like we want to get in and if we're building a house we want to put the doorbell in you know but we need yeah. to put the foundations in we need to get everything right first before we can start to put things other things in so yeah, but, yeah for me and i think always... that was a great example because it's showing that it's lines that we're looking for and i think that's what the brain tends to want to put the oval shape and the yeah. round shapes and and so start that's off, a great tip start off lines. With broad straight lines and look at abstract shapes you know and and don't look at like be um uh, uh, kind of go to the point where you don't want to draw uh, you're not drawing an eye you're drawing the shape of whatever that line is and if you do that if you can be um detached like that then when you kind of look back at your drawing you're like oh okay I, i've drawn a face but you haven't. You've, you know, you've not. You have, but you haven't. You've drawn. You haven't drawn a mouth. You haven't drawn a nose. You haven't drawn. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of um, t separate like features. You've drawn how the features relate to each other within that kind of mass of your face. Well, that you know. Yeah. Yeah. She's made up of a series of shapes and lines. Yes. Oh, I mean, that's that's what it is. Thank that's you so much. Really Jules has said thank you. I have to go now, but really enjoyed it. Jules says you've got a lovely teaching style, Lloyd. Thank you very much. Cool. Is that all right? It is. I think it looks like me. Oh, that's another one thing, one tiny thing. Um, look in the mirror at your drawing or take a photo of it and then um, look at the photo because you, 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 it's called like it's refreshing your eye. You know, um, like mm. the masters used to do it. They, they'd have a mirror and they'd look at them, look at their drawing through a mirror like that. You know, yeah, did they? I didn't know but, that. Yeah, so it's it's refreshing your eye and they're looking at it and, and it's so good. You can see glaring errors. Um, like you know, I probably I I, snow, I I call it snow blindness. You're looking, 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 and you can't quite pick up. You know where your um where your problem where the where the issues are. You know, so like it's, it's it's good to to take a photo or look at it through a mirror or yeah. rest, rest it ten, ten against the wall. Yeah, if you take a photograph of your work, you see it with a di completely different perspective. Totally. It's funny, isn't it? And Absolutely. I didn't know about the mirror thing. I've no, it's, it's not a good tip. Thank you. Yeah. Um, oh, where are we going? Oh. We're both here. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Right, thank you so much. That was You're amazing. Very welcome. Thank you so much. Really enjoyed it. Rudy says thank you. Patricia says thank you. I'm really glad you enjoyed it, everyone. Thank you so much to Lloyd because I know how busy you are. So I really, really appreciate you coming up to do this today. You're very welcome. Thank you. Um, it's been nice for us all. Nice. Great. Of art Great. Lovely yeah. for me to do. Thank you. I really appreciate uh, the opportunity and I really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. And please, could you send me your links and then I can put them into the comments afterwards sure. so people can go and follow you and look you up. And please, if you've drawn anything today, I or if you didn't this week, please, please hang up. Yeah, put the, in the comments below, put all your pictures in there as an attachment because then Lori can go back and have a look as well. So wonderful. Thank you ever awesome. so much. I hope you all have a wonderful week and take care. See you soon. Bye. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.